Hello, this is Mr. Bus, and I'm going to walk you through how to successfully create the Create Content project and turn that in. First step, you're going to want to identify a learning target, and the second step is to become an expert and research that learning target. Third step is to create a product and publish it, and the fourth step is to fill out the self-assessment rubric and attach a link. All right, so first step, learning target. Where are the learning targets? They're in the iBooks. All right, so I can simply look on a, a, a page of the iBook, and each page of the iBook will have a learning target on the bottom of the page. Okay, if I want to scan all the learning targets that are available, I can do that in the preface. So here's all of the learning targets for the first iBook. And then it's listed by chapter and section number. So I can, and these are all hyperlinked. So if I want to create a product on unconformities, I can click on what that would be 2.3. I think I clicked on the 2.4 one. So here's fossils learning target section, chapter two, section four, describe the processes that lead to the formation of fossils. I skipped over the section. 3 one. Chapter 2, Section 3, Define Unconformity, Uniformitarianism, and Index Fossil. So choose a learning target from the iBook, and that's step one. Okay. Step two is to become an expert of that learning target, and you're going to be the teacher of that learning target. So obviously the book goes through some stuff for the learning target. So there are a number of pages here um, on Chapter 2, Section 3 of Defining an unconform Unconformity, Uniformitarianism, and Index Fossil. All right, so you could go through that and be an expert of that. What I want for the product, however, is for you to be more knowledgeable about the learning target than just what's in the iBook. So go and probably go to you know Google Online Sources and dig deeper with the learning target. This is your opportunity. Hopefully you're choosing a learning target that you're somewhat interested in, and so it's an opportunity to dig deeper into the the learning target that you are checking out. So going to Google and um, finding out maybe current topics related to this, maybe some additional resources, and that's step two. Step three is to create a product and publish it. So let's talk about that next. So in class, we went over explain everything and green screen and telegami. I mentioned ThingLink, Pic Collage, iMovie. The end product is going to be hyperlinked. So, for example, a YouTube video. So if you're making an iMovie, you're going to export that to YouTube. If you're making an Explain Everything screencast, you're going to export that to YouTube. So if you haven't yet set up your YouTube channel, it's, the at, it's, the, it's your student number at isd192.org. So log into YouTube with that, and you should be able to set up your channel so that you can export to the channel. Remember, you don't have to um, make it a public video. It could be unlisted or private if you want to limit the audience, of course. Um, you can leave it as uh, public for anyone to find. That is your choice. Recall that as you do this project, one of the areas you'll be assessed on in the rubric is creativity. And so try to find a way that you can create a product that is unique and original and creative. Some of the ways that you can do that would be to include your own sketches and artwork, possibly in Notability. Um, There's a lot of way that a lot of students uh, do this. Another um, thing to consider is that you can use maybe some of the apps that have been provided to you, such as the green screen app or Telegami, and um, create something new and original. Explain Everything is another great app to use to talk and uh, draw and sketch over images as you explain your content as well. All right, so after you have identified your learning targets, um, become an expert of the learning target, and done some additional research, created a product, and published it, you're ready to turn in your Create Content project. All right, in order to do that, you're going to go to Google Classroom. And you're going to go to the Earth Science Content Creation Topic 1, which is due April 6th. Okay? And 
you're going to click on the Google Doc called Student Content Creation Topic 1 GOE. That's going to open up in Google Docs, the app. And if you don't have Google Docs, you'll need to have Google Docs for this. And so in blue, obviously, you're going to replace what I have with your own information. So name, type your name. Learning target, type out the learning target. Okay, this is where you're going to link to your project also. So you have hopefully already copied the link to your project. And then here is where you can go ahead and paste that. Okay, use the rubric below to self-evaluate. Point value out of 30 points. Possible. And then you're going to type your score. Okay, so if your learning target was clearly stated, which it should have been, then you can highlight that portion of the rubric to identify that your learning target was clearly stated. Going on to the next, and that's worth five points. Going on to personalization, this is where you need to have your voice expressed. So for five points, total points, if it's personalized, if a student has clearly expressed earth science content using their voice, and I can tell as I listen to you that you get it and you're pronouncing things right, that would be personalized. If you have done some additional research and gone above and beyond, demonstrated above and beyond that you are competent with this learning target beyond what the level of the iBook goes through, you have become an expert uh, in the content area for that learning target. And that is worth 10 points. Okay, so that would be highlighted. If you were basic, that would be worth five points, obviously. And if you were not an expert at all, that'd be zero points. Originality. And this is where you got creative. You maybe did some green screening, or you have your own personal sketches. Um, if you're using all Google images and not doing anything additional, that would be not very original. Basic would be um, a little bit of your own stuff, and original would be, um, boy, you probably got um, the majority of content is your own sketches, your own creation, your own ideas. Not saying that the research wasn't your own ideas. You're actually obviously doing research um, on the web, and so that stuff is not your own. However, what you're showing us in terms of images and ideas and how you express that is original. Okay, so if you have an original project that probably looks different than what I've seen before, because it's your own work, and it's got your own sketches and all that stuff, then you're going to highlight that area. And then you have earned full credit on the project. I will, of course, take a look at it, your product also. But this helps me because I have an idea now as to what you're expecting to get for the project. You're expecting to get a 30 out of 30. Looks like you spent time with this. You're going to then type your score where it says type your score. All right. And then you are all set. And you can turn this in. How do you turn it in? You're going to go back to Google Classroom. And it doesn't show on mine because I'm the teacher. But on yours, it will say Turn In under Student Work. So go ahead and you would click on, on Student Work and click Turn In, and that would turn in for me. And that's the bell. That must mean I'm done. Let me know if you have any questions.